so that the first thing that, uh, one of the first things that attracted my attention was, of course, the segregation, the fact that most poverty was associated with people of minority, and uh, of course that in the places and in the neighborhoods where those people lived, there was a kind of lettering, signage, murals, uh, all kinds of expressions which I found interesting and which made me sort of enter into a world that I could relate to. I, I mean, I could not relate to the war in Vietnam that was going on. I could not relate to a lot of the interests that my other classmates had. But this sort of thing, you know, because I saw uh, examples, and if you go to the section that says the country, I would see this thing, and I could sort of understand. I was here sort of longing for a place that I had left behind. <laughs> but so were the Puerto Ricans, you know? you know. So I would look at their things and say, well, so that's the way they think of paradise. You know, that's their, their vision of paradise. You can imagine, I mean, see the first picture, one picture, two, <laughs> picture three, and, uh, and think of the Bronx and what the Bronx look. Did you in the Bronx? He, well, <laughs> this one is. This one is. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was all burnt buildings. I mean, it was just so much of it was just empty, you know, or getting empty. And uh, I just thought, this is the way people dream here in these places. And of course, uh, I also realized that there was no value that people were getting. And also blacks in Harlem, you know, because back in the 60s, there was still some migration. People were, you would ask people, where are you from? And they would say Alabama or Georgia or some other place which is very unlike uh, New York City and Harlem. So you carry your place with yourself. This is Chicago. So, uh, so that was that was my first connection with this uh, with this uh, uh, sort of art and uh, uh, signage uh, and and since then there's been an evolution of course. First of all, the rural, uh, the country imagery you don't see it, you see it very rarely in New York today. You may see a rooster somewhere in the building on the outside of a building. Uh, but you do see it in the Los Angeles. And, and, and the reason is because over, over the last 20 or 30 years, there's been a very large uh, movement of people from Central America and Mexico into Los Angeles. And now they are the, the majority of the population there. So, so it, was, it was sort of, <laughs> you could say, how do you get out of this world and you get into another world? And that's what they were doing, and that's what I was doing, and that's what we talked about, and we enjoyed it. And I, 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 I love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, what is a good time? Well, a good time here, you can see what a good time is. How do you have a good time? What you do, what you put together. And I also felt there are people out there that are telling the history of this community, that they're telling that, you know, that uh, this is part of the history of America, and, this, and, and all of this imagery is not being taken into consideration. It's not, it, it's not making it because the people who control culture or have, you know, they just don't have room for this sort of thing. Uh, so that was even a greater incentive for me to put it, uh, to, to put this together, to put all the material that I had assembled together, that much of this imagery is disappearing now because it's simpler to go to Kinko and have a sign made there. Mm -hmm. And that's machine made. It's not the hand of people that are uh, uh, depicting their, their landscapes or their, or their longings or their 
their memories, you know, it's, somebody once described it to me. They put you at the center of your memories. This is done by a really good folk artist in LA called Manuel G. Cruz that I've been campaigning and, and telling people about him and just, uh, just uh, you know, he, <laughs> they're drunk that he would live in a pickup truck that he wow. parked across from the bar <laughs> and he would do a number of, uh, of uh, 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 murals in different storefronts and bars and stuff. And something, when he put his most important work uh, was a butcher shop and the lady of the butcher shop was was converted to Protestantism. She was Catholic, so they, they put a lot of Catholic imagery in you know, the, the Last Supper, the, 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 the imagery of missions and things like that. So the lady that now became Protestant just erased all of this wow. stuff. And to me, it was like erasing you know, some of the best images. And I think. Uh, <coughs> If you briefly go to history and lettering, a history, history and identity, you know, that's another, the other way in which this was very important. I love this side well, because I saw it and it really shows the greediness of Camden, New Jersey, for those of you who haven't been there. So if you show the big, the big spread with, the, with all the like, contact points, good. So, so what you can see is, is this uh, struggle for people to portray their identity on their businesses and their history. You know, for blacks and for Latin, for blacks and Latinos, particularly in Central America and Mexico, you know, the pyramids were a, an important element to their identity. And of course, for blacks, it was slavery. It was the Black Panthers, you know, then they became part of their, of their history. And, uh, and you do see, and then there are people that, for instance, that it's like they become like their local, uh, they, they create like their local newspaper, or their local, you know, they change their, if you go up a little bit, Ben, if you can go up a little bit, here you see a man that would put, on 125th Street, pic pic picture pictures of slavery and lynching, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know some some more of those. And as the years went by, Trayvon Martin was assassinated, so Trayvon Martin got his picture out there, mm -hmm. and uh, and so on until he died about a year ago or two years ago. So uh, so there are those those were. Uh, things that I found touching because they, you know, if, if, if you're a member of the, of the mainstream, uh, if you're not in a segregated place, you don't feel that need to sort of paint your history or depict your history in your, in your neighborhood or in your surroundings. But in this case, like in this picture in Detroit, you see the, the Detroit is expressed there in the main building that is the Renaissance Center. The United States in the eagle and the, and the flag, the fist, the fist and the fist, you know, which is a symbol of John Lewis who lived in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And then in the back is it's uh, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and the mayor of uh, Detroit for many years, Coleman Young. And to the side that the two athletes, the American athletes, put, did the fist, the sign at the uh, Mexican Olympics, I think. I mean, if you want, we can start talking from now on, because this is a very politically mm -hmm. incorrect uh, uh, mural that it comes from the corner homes in Chicago. And, uh, and just, you know, I just felt that. <laughs> that was very, uh, it was very telling of the time, of the way of thinking, and, uh, and uh, I was glad to have made a photograph of that. 
over the years, did you notice people actually stopping and admiring or studying these images, or just like living with them? I mean, there'd be a lot of people who would ask me, why are you doing, why are you taking a picture of that? Yeah. That, that didn't happen. Why that? Right. And, uh, and, you know, why are you interested in that? And, uh, you know, of course, that was explained, and, and uh, was, you know, collector. I think everybody understands a collector. You know, that's like... You said you're a collector? That, of images, of oh. this type of images. Yeah, I, I once spent the afternoon up at the uh, po main post office in the Bronx with the WPA Ben Sean mural, and not a single, thousands of people were in that post office, and no one looked up at them. Mm. And I purposely, I really was watching carefully, mm. no, but entering, the... going, to, and it was like they were not there, they were invisible, and they're yeah. very visible. Uh, yeah. the, the, the murals in Harlem, the ones that I showed, the guy that would change the yeah, news, you got it. those who get a lot of attention from white tourists. Mm. <laughs> you know? yeah, and I figured the more northern they were, the mm. Swedes and Norwegians, yeah. you know, the more interest they had on those, uh, on those murals, what they depicted. But uh, this, this is Black Panthers, of course. Mm -hmm. I, and it's from, is this like a more a This is from LA. It's, it's a more recent picture. I mean, it's, it's very interesting in a place like Oakland, where the Black Panthers are part of the identity of the city. So whether or not you like them, Oakland is defined by being the place where the Black Panthers started. So, so that it's, there is a proliferation of Black Panther images. It's a set in LA, there are a few, but also Chicago is the next one because of Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. And slavery is a big theme here. And I was very interested uh, to find and discouraged too that when all those articles came about in the papers about the, the 500 years or 400 years of slavery, mm -hmm. you know, 400? I'm sorry, say? 400 years of inequality? Yes. Yeah. Well, when the first slave ship came to America, that was 400 years ago, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. So what happened is that not a single picture used in the media at that time was a picture like this. For, mm -hmm. for instance, this is a very moving picture. It's a picture of kids in Camden, New Jersey, that in 19... 76 for the bicentennial had to go down the street, Broadway Street, the main street of the town who was then half ruined, mm -hmm. and had to do a, a celebration of the bicentennial. So how do we celebrate <laughs> the bicentennial? Uh, and the, you know the question they asked, and I talked to some of them, was what were slaves? You know, mm -hmm. what is there to celebrate? And then we were slaves for another, uh, I don't know, 70 years, 80 years. So uh, some of this is uh, part of the imagery that was, I collected from that period. It's been overgrown. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, this is part, of, you go through projects like this one in Brownsville. <laughs> and behind the bushes, you know, you begin to see this. So you, you get this sense that, I, you know, that this is somewhat like an archaeological site. <laughs> you know, it's, it's the remains of something, but it's the remains of something that was really uh, important and, and, and telling in the context of the public housing and in the context of the times. <laughs> Yeah. Who would imagine right, the Statue of Liberty black? <laughs> well, 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 Snow White had been made black yeah. too in, 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 uh, in Detroit. Uh, and here you have, it's not only black, but she's mad. <laughs> and uh, and there is, uh, they break the chains. And, and this is in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. But I feel... Well, one question just, I mean, uh, oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, One question I guess I would have is um, the extent to which, so, you know, in, in talking about the change from uh, rural imagery and, you know, African Americans coming up in great migrations and seeing that reflected in his work. But then, over time, is that changing to sort of the urban past? Maybe not so much the rural past, but like as housing, public housing is um, raised and so on. Like, is that trajectory continued to be reflected in the art? I think you see two different traditions. One is celebrating the her heroes and heroines, you know, of the inner city. And there you get the most popular one, of course, is Martin Luther King. Uh, at one point, Obama was sort of getting up there. Malcolm X was equal. Nelson Mandela at one time was very, very popular, and then it became less popular. And then some women have sort of become part of that pantheon, like Sojourner Truth. And in Detroit, most of all, is well, what's the lady that didn't of the bus? Uh, Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks, yeah. Rosa Parks. So, uh, so in that sense, in that sense, it's sort of really interesting to see the evolution of, of you know, this sort of change in interest of people from, uh, from you know, of a changing type of energy. Who do they put together? You know, what was it doing? At one point, the strongest trio was. Mandela, oh, yeah. uh, Martin Luther King, yeah. and Malcolm X. Yeah. You know, and then you can see similar things among the black population. Also, the, the marketing is part of this, because if you have a store in a Latino neighborhood, and, and the neighborhood also has blacks, mm -hmm. significant, take a lot of South Central. Yeah. South Central. Yeah. So then you put some uh, you put Martin Luther King, but of course a lot of Latino painters didn't know how to paint the black person. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I wondered, Lawrence, growing up uh, in, in the South LA, did, what did these, did you see a lot of this stuff? Or you just, it was just background? Uh, yeah, like I say, um, yeah, I never did a lot of tagging or anything, but yeah, there were a lot of murals up and uh, things like that, and then um, as, uh, like I said, a lot of neighborhoods, it was kind of funny the way neighborhoods went, like first a lot of them were white and black and then a lot of the whites moved out completely, then they were all black and then a lot of Latinos started moving in late, later on and then they got mixed and then that's when a lot of, uh, you'd see a lot of uh, street art that was mixed like he was just talking about things about Malcolm X, Martin Luther King and all of that and then you see uh, things up about, you know, Zapata and uh, all kind of uh, Latino things are just, um, they're, yeah, they're you know, like that and, um, you know, just people in the countryside. Because I've seen, that's what Camilo, Camilo uh, this subject is amazing because I've seen a lot of things like that in Los Angeles where, like I say, you're in the city but look like somebody paints, uh, you know, the, the side of a wall or something that looks like you're back in a small town in Mexico in a Pueblo or whatever. Like they're longing for how the simple life was and now they're, up here doing drywall and <laughs> painting and just working around the clock and struggling to pay bills and stuff. So, yeah, it's very interesting. But yeah, they, they, like I said, later and later, early on there weren't that many uh, paintings on walls and street art, but uh, later on uh, there's been a combination of graffiti and then it became like an art form where instead of like, oh, this is garbage, then you know, let's take it, let's paint over it. But then, like I say, it turned into art and then there's a lot of places where they have walls uh, where it might have been graffiti or something, but it's, it's street art from the taggers, and then, like I say, serious paintings like what we've been uh, seeing here. So it's, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of it in Los Angeles, a lot of it. Uh, it was kind of funny, um, there's a big, uh, in the city of Vernon, it's called a uh, Farmer John Meatpacking Plant, and the whole, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but they had this big mural all across the whole side of the building. And it's just amazing, the same thing, it looks like, you know, you're in another world and stuff. And uh, so th th there's a lot of street art in Los Angeles. Yeah, it, it's uh, great stuff. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, on uh, the copy of a Real Deal uh, comics, uh, the Real Deal number one, uh, we had a uh, uh, tagger. Uh, he did his name was Ricardo, and he did a backdrop of Real Deal, of, and he copied 
the cover of the magazine, and he did it all with just uh, spray cans on a canvas, and it's amazing. Uh, I don't have that issue with me, but he, uh, he did, I mean, if you Google Real Deal Comics, C-O-M-I-X, you'll see all the issues, and you'll see that, uh, the, it covered the first one, and then the backdrop, you'll see, uh, you know, we stand in front of when we do different comic cons and stuff. Yeah, so, uh, other than that, but yeah, like, there's a lot of good stuff out there, and I'm sorry I'm only in New York for two days, because, uh, yeah, I love this city, I used to come here a lot before, and uh, want to really get around and see some of the stuff that uh, you've been taking pictures of, because especially if I could get up to Harlem and all oh, play in the Bronx and things like that, uh, yeah, that, uh, you hit all the boroughs, yeah, you see what's out there. Is there much street art, street art in, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Staten Island? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't looked. Yeah, I was wondering. I've been there a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. checked it. Yeah, I think so. Do you have anything else? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sure. Actually, well, just going back to what you were saying about, um, you know, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and sort of. So if you look in the famous people section, I guess, mm -hmm. and um, well, between that one and the history, but for sure in the famous people, it was. So Martin Luther King definitely is the um, vast majority of those images. Mm -hmm. But I just, I was interested if, you know, to the extent that um, it differs from what you have just shown here, but, so there, there, is, a, there is a variety, Marcus Garvey, Martin Douglas, and so on, but like, so you either have images of Martin Luther King and, and then also you know, sort of iconic moments from the civil rights movement, so March on Washington is represented there and so on. Yeah. But it's like, does that, you know, not get updated to more recent history? Or, you know, so that, you know, we're, well, for example, you don't have, well, Obama, there were a few of Obama, but you don't see Ferguson, you don't see, I mean, I'm just wondering where I, the contemporary think, struggle the martyrs, shows up. The martyrs, the people who get shot, the people who those get shot. So you're updated by tragedy. I mean, and so Trayvon, there was there were a few of him, but then again, I mean, it also I don't know. I just was surprised the extent to which much of the imagery seemed to be about a sort of historic, a particular historic moment, and not to to the same extent the contemporary kind of continuation of that struggle, or you know, or even in the case of Trayvon Martin, just in terms of um, either state violence or racialized violence in, in the streets. Since these, this is street art, sure. it seemed like there was less of that than. Well, Obama for a while was really important. And there was one the picture where he's depicted with his wife. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's being called the Obama building. You know, it's just it's a picture of there where they are dancing. So that building is referred in Detroit as being the Obama building. The, the, the mural has defined the place. Uh, more recent, I'm just trying to think. I mean, you know, he's, he's out of office for three years, so that's pretty recent. And uh, and since that, I mean, what the, what big things have happened that uh, that get represented there? Uh, you know, some women are coming. I mean, Frida Kahlo is coming, sort of strong. Uh, other people. You know that that's the sort of that? what? Where is that? In Chicago. Oh. In Chicago, and that's that's sort of interesting. That's Harold Washington is at the center, mm -hmm. and Harold Washington, it's the largest image in that mural, and then uh, today Harold Washington is more or less not so much in in, in more recent murals in, in Chicago. Uh, all similarly, Malcolm X. Malcolm X used to be like in this picture in Detroit. He was certainly the dominant figure, and uh, and that has a little bit to do with where they are located. For instance, if it's this is in a drug treatment center, mm. so if you have a drug treatment center, you're much more hard, much more militant in the imagery. Uh, that, uh, that, that in uh, a grocery store. Uh, another interesting 
thing that I sort of forgot to mention is who are the curators? So the curator of this thing may be somebody who owns a bodega or somebody who owns a liquor store. Liquor store owners are big time supporters of this of street art. Uh, a lot of institutions, you know, like drug treatment centers and so on. And, uh, and uh, more, well, not more recent, for a long time, drug dealers, because of course a lot of the people that work with them got shot. So the gang, <laughs> drug dealers, then become uh, the, pe the, the people who commission images. This is a good example of, <laughs> of Martin Luther King painted by a Latino, <laughs> a Latino painter. So, so you end up, it, it, it actually has its charm. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it's, I, you know, it's sort of an Indian, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mexican Indian feature. So can I ask, so the liquor store, it didn't occur to me. For some reason, I don't know, I just sort of assumed that work just sort of showed up somehow on these walls. It never occurred to me that the liquor stores might be commissioning it. Yeah. And I was wondering if you could talk about the extent to which, or what, you know, besides wanting to see their faces on the side of the wall, maybe the owners, but what else were they trying to achieve in having that work on the wall? Because it's interesting, on the one hand, you have, you know, it's kind of this juxtaposition of black liberation, maybe, on the side of this liquor store, and yet the liquor store is, you know, frequently a site of contention within black communities for the, sure. for the disorder and other things that they generate. So you have that weird juxtaposition. And then it's also the case that liquor-related businesses have been sponsors of art. Um, so whether, in this case, it's the liquor store, but then also alcoholic beverage companies like Seagram's in the late 80s, early 90s, commissioned works by different artists, well-known artists, and then donated those lithographs to the National Urban League, and then the Urban League um, was able to sell them. And so at the time, the Urban League uh, president and CEO said of this project, uh, quote, for more than four decades, Joseph E. Seagram and Sons has been a supporter of the National Urban League and its work. Through its annual donation to, to us of limited edition lithographs of works by some of our foremost artists, Seagram's Gin makes a strong positive commitment to the African American community. <laughs> so, you know, to, are these liquor stores engaging in the same kind of manage, image management and having, you know, in, in being seen as patrons of African American art? Or what, you know, what, what is happening? Well, I, I, I'll give you an example. There is a, the main street in Newark, uh, the main commercial street, was was called, uh, it's called Springfield Avenue. Now in Springfield Avenue, right now where they have some big box store, you know, Home Depot, there is a liquor store, and for a while it was like the one business that was out there, and I talked to the guy that owned it, I help the kids, you know, I, <laughs> I help them with baseball uniform, mm. and, uh, and also he felt that he was a pillar of the community, even mm. though, of course, you could look at the liquor store, <laughs> and you would see the people that were waiting to sort of get enough money so they could get <laughs> a, 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 a bottle of some, <laughs> of some hard stuff. So that said, you know, they, 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 the muralists give them some sort of moral standing. So, I mean, that's the connection, and uh, and, uh, and and it's very, it's very frequent. <laughs> this is this is this, the, the, the mural serve this ambiguous purpose sometimes. In this case, this is. Uh, What's the singer? Nina Simone. Nina Simone. So Nina Simone is painted by a Latino, a Latino painter for a Latino homeowner hmm. because this is in the black area of Chicago near okay, Rosewood okay. Road and you know the West Side. And he was afraid that his whole side of the building was going to be defaced with some graffiti. So, so he figured if he put Nina Simone there, that would save him from the trouble. And she's placed like a saint, you know, you can see the halo behind her. And her almost religious uh, attire. Go, go ahead. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> 
<laughs> give me that. Now that was that, um, what's her name? Not Give me Mahalia Jackson, yeah, yeah. No, is this in Chicago too? In Detroit. Oh, that one's in Detroit, yeah. Now, a little bit, the, the, some of these have almost a, like a cartoon, you look about like a cartoonist or, you know, a, a, you know something animated or something. That's, that's the beauty of them, but that they're on these walls in the neighborhoods and, uh, well, that's Lady Day there. And uh, it's just, like I say, I love street art because, like I say, people are doing this because not necessarily for the money or, you know, not getting rich with it. A lot of times not making anything at all, but it's just for the sake of the art. And that, that's the beauty of it. Well, sometimes that happens. This yeah. Ali, uh, that now she's, the, you know, the, oh, she's on the news again yeah. because she was 50 years old when she married uh, R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. And she died when she was 18. And he's the cab driver and his beating by the police generated the North Riot, 1967. What vintage is that? The, the, I'm one? sorry, say it again? What was the vintage of the previous one? The, the cab driver? The cab driver, yeah. Do you remember? You know, I, I don't know the date, but I think I could, I could the picture is fairly recent. Oh. No, no, I don't it. 2015, yeah. that's what it <laughs> So, in that interview that you, you did with Cynthia Davison, yes. um, there, there's a point where you talked about uh, that you were document you were trying to document these works with a kind of sense of urgency yes. because of the fact that they weren't going to be around necessarily. Yes. But when I read it, I kind of misread it at first and thought you had said the artists were trying to create those works with a sense of urgency, and then I reread it. And realized it. But I wonder, true. yeah, I wonder if that you, do you have that sense, or if you talked to any of the artists, or how they were there. I did talk when I was uh, when I saw them painting stuff. I did go and, and, and talk to them. I mean, most of the times that I talked to them was like in a grocery store or you know some kind of business. And I mean, they were doing the thing. And I mean, they didn't seem to me to be particularly uh, rushed. And also, uh, a number of them had a sense that they were. Uh, that they would do anything that the store owner would ask them to do. Uh, others, like the one that you just put there, this is the uh, important one. It even made the art bulletin, if you can imagine that, because uh, it, was, it reflects the killing of a sort of low-level drug dealer. Hmm. So here was this small guy, about 50, 120 pounds or something, and two huge policemen, Detroit policemen, beat him so badly that he uh, he died. And uh, and then it went on for several years. And the policemen ended up in jail in Detroit, and they ended up for something like five or six years. So they kept this uh, this the front of this place, even though it was an abandoned front even though it burned afterwards, mm -hmm. but it sort of collected, uh, you know, the, the, the new details about the trial, and, and you, so there was something organic about it. His name was Malice Green, you can see it there. And, uh, and the muralist, and here you have somebody says, it was in God's work that led him to paint the mural on a rainy day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> leaving a portrait that seemed to be shedding tears. Mm -hmm. So so you do have the people who would do the thing for the money for the grocery store owner, but you do have other people, like often if you show them on the section on cars, if you show them uh, cars, uh, motor vehicles, we were just on up there, back to the right, top right. You see, what what you have is, uh, is it's that people come. I mean, it's that people come with a vision, and and the guy that did those square cars that you see, 
Mr. Fix It and the one next to it, that were just the opposite of the sort of aerodynamic, uh, you know, Detroit big, big just gasway type of car. Uh, and that's, uh, that's another one. So, so that you have people with a vision, and here, this guy would always put the license plate would be one, two, three. <laughs> A, B, C, one, two, three. And then, uh, something about God. <laughs> but, the, the car story in Detroit was really interesting because, uh, when Detroit was going through hard times, the car dealerships closed. And then after the car dealerships closed, then the repair shops closed. Yeah. So if you bought a new car in Detroit, you had to buy it in the suburbs, mm. and you had to have it serviced in the suburbs. Wow. But what remained in Detroit were the places that wash your car. Mm. So, so those are the ones that then would, uh, would, uh, would uh, commission mm -hmm people to, this is from Newark, so mm -hmm. I believe, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, so that's the Detroit story. <laughs> 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 and this is, New, this is uh, Gary, Indiana, mm -hmm. you know, so they'll do the wash, they'll wash your car, but that's about what they do. That's Detroit. And, and here there are there are all the, there are these murals, this old traditional mural, where you see blacks and Latinos sort of coming together, you know, in uh, in, in history, or coming together in this car, in this case, watching vehicle. <laughs> this is in Skid Row, in Los Angeles. You know, so. the, the, um or if there's any section you want to Yeah, the, um, the signage, the, the chain link fences. Oh, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, if you could have questions if you wanted to. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. sure. Um, well, for one, I thought it was interesting that, you know, it's um, rather, it's, it's quite a conversation that's happening between the, the poster, the people posting the signs and the, and, the, and the community. So it's not just that they're selling things, so they're, they're asking for things from passersby, so boats, um, junk cars to sell on your house. Um, you know, we buy houses, and then they're selling goods, phones, carpets, tacos, um, providing services. There were a lot of, um, yeah, refrigerator repair, um, bathtub reglazing, real estate loans, all these different things. And then, that, then there were some just, here's cars, there were just statements of cracks, like home care workers should have bigger um, salaries. And so, um, to, you know, from out of the section that you have here, is there some other kind of part of the conversation that you think you don't have visible? Um, I mean, I love those things very much. And I think uh, most of the examples are from Los Angeles. And the reason they're here is because I went to Los Angeles in 1992, right after the riot, about three months after the riot. And there were all these places that had been burned out so that they had been cleaned and they had put chain link fences around them. So, so with that, that work, I said, a lot of museum walls have been added to uh, this section, South Central Los Angeles. Union Los Angeles. So the result then was that uh, that uh, that I would follow. And this case, this Jane, for instance, this was somebody that would do every single sign was different from the other one. Mm. And uh, and you could see if you can show the, all the Janes Great. together, so you can you can see them together on the top. You can see them one, two, three, four. Uh, all the jade ones, and you see a different type of hair uh, and different composition. And I thought that that was such an important element, you know, of this kind of of the neighborhood, such an such a defining 
a lot of people saw them in LA. I would talk to them and say, you know, I have a bunch of pictures of this uh, Jane's uh, uh, sign. And uh, of course, they all were new, new about it. Now there is not a single Jane sign in Los Angeles. And, uh, and they still, uh, you know, so I'm very proud and happy to have those pictures, you know, so, so that that is remembered. And some other people can decide, well, was that important? Was not that important? Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, well, you know, about new things coming up, new, different type of signs. Well, I mean, there are some, some there about prison rights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so so dieta, dieta, that means uh, fasting. You know, so they probably sell you something. <laughs> Board, uh, it's just uh, hauling, roofing, sober, li sober living homes. <laughs> And there was one for CPR somewhere that it's like, was that, there was one for CPR that was like, are you teaching CPR? Or were you just like, call the number if you need that? It's not like a word, so. they, they, it, 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 An interesting thing is that, you know, one of the things that energized me to do this was that the Getty just acquired uh, archives of people like Betty Saar and, and uh, you know, some really famous black African artists and had the intention of acquiring many more uh, of such uh, archives. And, and that somebody like Jade wasn't even in the radar. It was not, you know, this, this stuff don't count and that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, so I thought, I thought if I put them all together, well, it depends on this. <laughs> yeah, I find <laughs> shot. I want to be shot with that gun. Look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Estos? You estos? No. Uh, I'm sorry. There is there's a, a, a street muralist that was going to come to this presentation and that just got mixed up for a second. Actually, but the other thing with the, with the signs was that, you know, like the, the, the I thought of that with the, pres, the prison riot one also, but just the idea that not only the art is ephemeral, but also, uh, you know, the businesses in this case, mm -hmm. that for sure J JM travel doesn't exist anymore. Probably there are other people, it's probably, that's probably some guy with a van taking people to see, mm -hmm. see loved ones in prison. But that, so it's, you know, J.M. Cavill is ephemeral and sort of Jade braiding, you know, whether or not she's just not making the signs or the business mm -hmm. doesn't exist, but it's like the, so the artwork is ephemeral, but also the business is also the communities themselves to the extent, like, I don't know what section it is. There's a picture you have on the west side. Um, I think it was the mural with Fred Hampton. Mm -hmm. But the community itself, like, there's just enormous vacant lots that are um, reverting to prairie. I don't know where well, that is. I think that the, it should be at the end of the no, no it's, it's in the, oh, disappearing art. This, yeah, disappearing art. That's good. Uh, yeah, and you go to the end of it. And, uh, this I love Obama disappearing. Look at they just yeah. show Obama big. Because it's so <laughs> it's striking to see him like that. I mean, there is there is something that time adds to these images and makes them so often much more powerful than they were when they were freshly painted. So it's like this kind of thing kind of stops you. Uh, and here is uh, it's uh, Martin Luther King, and the next one is disappearing from there. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the end, you have Fred Hampton, and uh, and what it tells it shows uh, it to the end of the section. Uh, maybe we can scroll down. But here, the, the end is this. There it is. Yeah, this one on the. Yeah. So if you start. There is Fred Hampton, wow. and I think the fact that it's sort of falling apart, and the project where he grew up, the Corey Homes, uh, right next to him, uh, it, 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 it gives him a, a strength. But let's see the next one. And the next one has Angela Davis, mm -hmm. and here I'm moving back, so you can see where this is. 
And th this also gives you a sense of the places where a number of these murals were. Uh, and the next one will see. Right. <laughs> see wow. Chicago was like that at one time. But in fact, As the, if you look at that corner there, there's a beautiful library there that had gone up. Uh, on that very intersection. I was just going to say, so there's a library, and yet, but two of the corners essentially are still empty. Like they still are. There is a lot of land empty right yeah. there. The United Stadium is not far from here. So I mean, it's just right. So it was just I thought a, a striking kind of illustration in, in that the you know the art is fading, but also the community is fading. Like the buildings are not there. You know, yeah. they're sort of left with the disinvestment, and you know, which is vacant lots and. The businesses are also, you know, ephemeral. So it seemed like there's this kind of parallel process happening between the art and the community in which it sits. Yeah. It also, if you put the, if you, when you click the caption, so we see the date here. I think it's the 80s, 88. So of course, you know, you, that's 12, 12, and uh, it's almost 31 years ago. Mm -hmm. So a lot has changed in Chicago in 31 years. It doesn't, certainly doesn't look like this. I try to redo the picture, and then you find yourself that to redo this picture, you have to be like, you face a wall, and you can't, you can't, uh, you can't redo it. Um. There is one with, um, I think it's in memorials, that talks about gentrification, but it, it's, um, it's a, I think it is memorials, because it's a, Tribute to Plan B, I guess, is what the name was? Well, yes, yes. Um, Hall. Yeah, there. Plan B. And That's so, from Oakland. Right, exactly. And then, so that the sign, you know, welcome to Oakland, population rapidly decreasing. <laughs> you know, so that they're making that. Is, and, then, and then it's interesting because the green color, that his name is written in green, which is the same color as the sign. So it's like, you know, you wonder if that was perhaps some of, was that Plan B's demise that, you know, he was displaced? You know, symbolically, in terms of the gentrification that's happening in Oakland, but that that the artist clearly wanted to make that point, you know, about the nature of change, in the, even in the memorial. I think I think partly, and if you were to look at the names written there, and I bet most of the names there are probably of uh, of neighborhood people that somehow got involved in the gang and the gang wars and mm -hmm. got shot and killed. So maybe the the decreasing population, it means that the population of the young sort of uh, people in the neighborhood, it's, it's decreasing because they're getting shot. Or just that people are, the dispossession and displacement from gentrification, that the, the overall. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but I, some, some places don't look any better than they were 30, 40 years ago. I mean, you go to Gary, Indiana, you know, Camden, New Jersey, and a lot of the south side of Chicago, you, you know, it's, you don't see gentrification. You see it in some places, I mean, certainly in Williamsburg and, 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 and parts of New York. But uh, what we saw it recently, and I wonder where that put famous people there. Were. Famous people, put famous people. And if you go to the end, this is, I believe it's the last picture. Yeah, there, there it is. Oh, Make wow. it big. And it kind of stands out. And I was, <laughs> you, you, you know, and then I, I sort of look at the area, and the area is North Liberty. And this is right where the subway goes above, and the street is called Oxford. And the, and I feel, I mean, you look at everything, and you know, the murals used to be memorials to people that got shot, uh, and, and so on. And here is, uh, is Anthony Burden. <laughs> but what is happening is that gentrification is coming, and it's right within a block or two from where he is. And, uh, and I think it, his pictures have become a, a marker of that. This, I'm trying to put this sort of Latino imagery 
and uh, separate from the black imagery, except when they come together. And that's Benito Juarez, the, the, sort of the George Washington of, mm -hmm. of uh, Mexico. Here, <laughs> for some people, pretty different. <laughs> I mean, here is extremely important. You probably now, you probably can say something about here. And, Sorry. You probably, you know, you can say something about the importance of hair. I think, I, well, other than the obvious that I think it's a really uh, kind of poignant way to ascribe identity or to write, you know, to have that written in the built environment in terms of people's hairstyles doing hair. Um, you know what different kinds of, you know, some of them are barbershops, some are hair salons, some are just styles. Um, it seems like, right? Some are just pictures that are not connected to a business. They're just images of black hair and black, black people. Uh, uh, most of them are in barbershops. Are they? Most of them yeah. are. Um, it certainly is reminiscent of the, you see those, um, for example, in Ghana or in, in other African countries where they have the, the mm -hmm. handmade kind of, you know, um, barbershop. I thought also it was interesting that apart from hair, you know, some of the other ways that the, when, when, when artists were, were putting skylines um, in the art, it was like so that you're, you're, you're writing the city on the city, you know, that the city, you're, you're putting pictures of the city on city buildings. Mm -hmm. And so, and so um, really claiming that, you know, really claiming um, identity in the city and ownership of it, and, and a, a rejection of being excluded from it. So I think it's the same the same thing happening. Yeah. Well, this is uh, in, in this particular station, and uh, if you put the, the caption there in Bed Stuy, this this is heavily gentrified now, yes. and of course this has disappeared completely. 